Chris and Donlin, I want to talk to you about franchises. Oh, great. For... Are we opening one? Yeah, we're not, actually. We're talking about whether or not they should return sometimes. <laughs> so you might have seen this week that we uploaded a video entitled Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 is a glitchy mess. That sounds good. That sounds po- I, We like it, then. No, we don't like it, and we picked that title because Tony Hawk's 5 Pro Skater, I said the name wrong, is a glitchy mess. And that kind of got a few others thinking about whether or not Tony Hawk should ever have come back. Not the person, <laughs> but the, uh, the video game franchise itself. Uh, because yeah. there's a lot of that this year. That yes, there is. There is a lot of stuff returning. Talk to me about uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. What? What? How do you feel seeing quite a treasured series? Right, the two and yeah. three are considered. Sort oh, they're of the great. Best they're authentically games great. Out there, they're authentically great games. And you know, it's weird to say it in that light when they've made so many great games. But it's weird to say it. But this actually does feel weirdly appropriate. The the state that it's been released in, not as a testament to the previous games in the series, but a, pref- a testament to just what a large publisher like Activision, mm-hmm. will sometimes do with the stuff it owns. Yep. It will grind it down, release after release, until this seems like a weirdly appropriate and honest place to leave it. Like, we have destroyed this franchise, and here it Tony is. Like a, a slowly t- s- s- yeah. slipping down into a Here it is, a like a twitching <laughs> arthritic mess, <laughs> half buried in concrete. And I think that's almost a, 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 <laughs> that's a, a perfect... <laughs> a perfect tombstone for, for yeah. this way of doing business. So there's a suggestion going around that uh, the license that Activision has for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is, is coming to an end and was always going to come in to an end in 2015. And even if that's not the case, even if that's just... Uh, <laughs> oh, can we just talk about that for a minute? Because I love that idea. The idea that you're going to have to return the rental car so <laughs> you plough it into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you plow it into a tree and get a little bit of money back oh, yeah. in the process. You, you sell tickets. The idea. You sell yeah. tickets. And yeah, even if that isn't the case, even if uh, that licensing stuff is is perhaps a bit more complicated than, than made out, it certainly looks like that. It certainly yeah. looks like this is a cash grab. It's like we we haven't done a Tony Hawk game in in quite some time. I think it was the last one, 2007, the proper, the last proper There was Project game. 8, wasn't there? Which was quite good. All right. And then there was... One after that, I want to say, maybe two. I think it's safe to say nobody loved this game. Mm-hmm. Probably nobody internally was... Nobody showed this game yeah. any love. And I worry that that's, that's happening with, with other franchises as well. They're, like, this year we're going to see both Guitar Hero and Rock Band come back, and those are two franchises that none of us have really thought about for a little while. I think there's a really important distinction, okay. and I'm very sorry to Robomodo for what I'm about to say, but Rod- Robomodo do not appear to be a very good developer mm-hmm. who did Tony Hawk. Um... And I'm sure they're lovely people. Um, whereas Freestyle Games, who are doing Guitar Hero, are yep. a great developer. Sure. And it's I think the proof is in the games they've made in the past, DJ Hero and stuff like that. I, I think where I think these are similar is I think that even though the end product is going to be quite different, I imagine mm-hmm. Guitar Hero will be a good game, and I imagine Rock Band will be a good game. I still don't think there's any actual reason to bring these back. I don't sure. sense anyone wanting to return. I was talking, we were talking about this in the office today, and I sort of assumed that everyone was quite embarrassed about that period, looking back, you know, the period where everyone's house was filled up with plastic crap. And it, I, I don't know... a lot if, of houses out there still are. I mean, they still are, but I don't think people want to return to that. Mm. I, my feeling is there's no more appetite for that, and it's like, when you look back, it's like Martin Amis talking about the 70s and, the, and like all of the clothes he used to wear. It feels like that. It feels like we're going back to like I'm not sure. I'm not crushed sure. velvet loon pants. I don't know if that's true to me. There might, you know, the nostalgia counts for a lot. There are going to be a, are you saying a new that, console. Are you saying that Rock Band is not our crushed velvet loon pants? I think that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the difference I wanted to point out between those, those two games... Um, I think the motivations for bringing both of them back are probably quite similar, but Rock Band seems to be doing it in a way that I'm a bit more comfortable with. So, it, because, you know, it's the the audience there is going to be people that used to play Rock Band. Yeah. And with this, with Rock Band 4, you're going to be able to use the old instruments. It's also going to respect the DLC purchases, the songs you purchased in the past. Whereas Guitar Hero, you... Sure, it is trying some new stuff with the kind of live performance stuff, yeah. which I'm not completely sold on myself, or whether some people might be... But you're buying new instruments for that. Yeah. That bit is where it starts to feel a bit more like the situation with Tony Hawk, where it's like, are you bringing back for any other reason than to, to make money? What do you want to do here? I do, yeah, I think in the boardroom level, I don't think there's any love for these okay. things. And I, I, I think people can tell. I think the, the difference now is going to be as good as freestyle are and as good as their game is going to be. I think people can tell this is coming from a place where it's a spot on a, a spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. 
At least I hope they can tell, because I think it is coming from first place. From the reaction that I've seen to Tony Hawk's, I think most people are leveling this at the feet of the publisher. I don't know what, yeah. how fair that is. I mean, we don't exactly no, we don't know, know how that I mean, relationship But works. you can certainly say the impetus yeah. and the go-no-go no go decision will have been the, the sure. publishers. They will have been the ones who go, no, this is this is all right. You know, he's not glitching too badly and it's kind of charming. So send it out the door. It worked for Skate 3. <laughs> it did, the crazy thing is it did work for Skate 3. And this is really interesting. The Skate 3 is authentically glitchy to its lovely physics. What the hell does that core. mean? What's authentically it means, glitchy? It's glitchy all the way down. Right. Whereas my understanding is is that Pro Skater 5, yep. once you take away the odd dodgy animation on corners and stuff like that, is actually just a boring game. That The glitchiness isn't even that exciting. It, it's not even glitchy, right? Right, man. I don't... That is that is an interesting way to sell a game. But, I mean, it did work for Skate 3. Let's, let's yeah, oh yeah, Skate 3 is. And had, Skate had 3 has a lot of fun. People have a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Skate 3. The thing is, franchise is a publisher word. I mm-hmm. don't think, like, That's developers ever set out to make a franchise. I think yeah. they want to make... A game, and maybe if they have an eye on the till, they you know they want to make enough money to keep of paying course, everyone. Yeah. But and I think that should totally be most developers I talk to, I get the impression that they want to do something different each time, or they want to do something which explores the same themes, but in a different the themes that they're fascinated with, but in a different sure. way. A really good example of this is the game we both played yesterday, which I can't remember the name of. The, the Beginner's, Beginner's Guide. Guide. Yeah. Yes, which is the latest game from the guy I can't remember his Dave name. David Reardon. Dave Reardon. The Stanley Parable. And the, the, so the Stanley Parable is. The indie equivalent of a rock band. It, it was a huge hit. Yep. Made him a lot of money. An um, unexpected one, I An unexpected well. hit, but still a huge hit. And even with a game as weird as that, there will have been some... Somebody somewhere would have said, you can do a sequel. And they could have. I honestly think they could have. The, the Stanley Parable is now a big enough name that... Yeah, the Stanley Parable I think that's as crazy as that sounds, it's true. But what he has done is he has taken his preoccupations with narrative and with monologue Mm -hmm. and with kind of game which reacts to you by talking to you and he has done something completely different yeah and really extraordinary and it's almost the opposite of that and this to me gets at something really interesting in that the beginner's guide is almost a sequel to the stanley parable but it's also totally not a sequel yeah and i wonder if this is the thing which we should actually have loyalty to not the idea of your favorite brand name coming back Mm -hmm. But the idea of the people who made the game that you loved doing something else that they also loved. And doing. progressing as well, yeah, in a progressing. way. Like they, you, you want them to try new things, but you want them to learn from their past games. Yeah. That, that's the bit that we should celebrate. I think the people who are great are the people, like, it's the same with writers. The writers who you fall in love with a lot of the time are the people who worry your way at the same problems. It's like Philip K. Dick, we were talking about him on the site the other day because there's a game coming out called Californium, which is a bit Philip K. Dickish. And. He wrote his short stories are incredible because if you read them, they're published chronologically now, and he will write five or six stories on the same idea, or like the same gimmick, and it'll have different directions, different treatments. It's because he was just fascinated by these things, these ideas, and he couldn't get it out of the system without kind of working through it. And I think you see the same with Davy Reardon. Mm-hmm. It's completely that process. And we we're talking about we we're kicking around the office earlier. We we're saying like, which franchises would you like to come back? Would you like to bring back? And it's, for a few minutes, it's always quite exciting. You go, oh, I'd love to see this again, or I'd love to see that again. And then you think, actually, no, I don't really want another From Dust game. What I want is another Eric Chahi game, who made From Dust. I want to see what he wants to do next, because I didn't know that I wanted From Dust before he made sure. it. What, I, what, I'm, what I'm buying into, my loyalty, isn't for any IP that Ubisoft has. It's another for, it's for publisher he, word that. Yeah, another publisher who is not against doing these sorts of things. Oh, no, I said IP, another publisher word Oh, of course, well, yeah, right? yeah, 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 absolutely. But, like, one thing... Uh, so it's really interesting to talk about Ubisoft because um, From Dust is a one-off and there won't be another one. And it was Eric Chahi's project. He wanted to do it and he did it. And I recently spoke to the Grow Home people, who I know I talk about all the time, but I said to them at the end, I said, I'm really... This is a weird question to ask, but I liked your game so much I almost don't want to see another one. Like... And they were like, there, there will not be another one. And that's exactly why. They want to do stuff that interests them. And they've done Grow mm-hmm. Home now. And so they'll do something else. That's the sort of thing which I think publishers could be sort of doubling down on. It's a much harder sell. Yeah. But it's also you get better stuff. I think, to be honest, there's probably a middle ground to be found here. Oh. If, if, if we're going to be oh. realistic about this. Because we've both given some very uh, idealistic answers there. Those oh, yeah. No. Basically, the, the, it's a reaction to... The, the other extreme, which is what we've seen this week of Tony Hawk. Oh, so are you saying the middle ground? I think the middle ground is what you what you sh- what we should say is then Sid Meier represents the middle ground. The rule of three on Civ. Each three each Civ has one third, which was in an uh, inchoate form in the previous game, which is now 
brought to fruition. One third which is unchanged, which is the core of the series, and one third which is new stuff. Sure. Which is why each sieve feels, in a way, like the first game in its own series a little bit. It would be nice if there was a feeling, an obvious feeling that these games were being made not just to to make more money than the last game, yeah. but also because they did want to try something different. They wanted to say something different. And I don't think that's even too idealistic. I think that's I think that yeah, should absolutely. be an expectation. Absolutely. I think yeah, games that have something to say is uh, never going to be uh, never going to have a problem with that. What does Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 have to say? It just says I'm really tired. I'm really tired and I'd like to I'd like to sit down and not sink through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if I if I have to sink through the floor, not very deeply. <laughs> All right. Cool. I think I want to end on that. That's great. Hello and welcome to the Eurogamer Show. We're at EGX 2015 and we played a few video games, so we may as well talk about them. Who wants to kick off? Yeah. Me? Uh, okay, I can do that.